All right, what is going on, everyone? And happy Wednesday. So, we are now live. Um, right now, we got like 15 minutes before the market opens, so I figured I would start now. So this way, kind of can just let things, you know, settle and prepare for whatever's, you know, going to happen. Not that it, uh, not that especially for me, not that I'm like, you know, rushing to do anything because I'm a swing trader primarily. So, you know, most of my stuff, I let it come to me. I'm not usually trading in the first few minutes unless something's running up that I'm in that I'm selling out of. Um, so just kind of taking it easy. SPY took a pretty big tumble the last like hour or two. Um, just one thing to note. So market's going to open down as of right now, down, you know, getting close to a half percent. So we'll see if that has anything to do with it. Um, we'll see. We will see. So um, anything, nothing that I am in is like super like, you know, pressing in terms of what's going on. One thing that I did note was that Cone, right? Um, C-O-H-N. This stock just crushed earnings. So this thing is running on up. Good morning, everyone. I mean, so, I'm sorry if I'm if I miss you know people jumping in, but um, let's see what do we got. We got some questions at the beginning. Let me just cover those if I can grab them. Thoughts on exit plan for Ken Chem Farm uh, KMPH. This is the KMPH. So this one had the FDA news, right? Had the FDA approval. I played this one just so that people understand, you know, my style of trading. Uh, I played it down here. So after it popped up to like seven something. Uh, it came right back down to where it was. I bought it down towards like six. I think it dipped into the five. Yeah, it dipped under six briefly. I bought it down there and I sold it up around ten. Was like my pri my my PT my price target. So like I didn't I wasn't one of those people that was stressing into the into the um, the Padufa date right, which was today or yesterday. Um, so that's not that's just not my style. Now yeah okay this one works out, but I've been in so many where it doesn't work out. For example, ADMP uh, months ago right ADMP obviously you know has re recovered quite a lot, but I was in ADMP, you know, and it dropped, it cut itself in half, like two seconds, you know? So, you, get, you know, that, that's why I don't like playing them. I like playing either the bounce or the run up into it, and I just don't want to hold through personally. Sometimes if I do, it's like a small amount of shares that I'm willing to kind of YOLO or, or risk to a degree. So that's my style of it. Um, let's see. HSTO down. Let's see. Um Let's pull up a daily on this bad boy. Yeah, I mean it's it's at a potentially a decent spot. So I would I would say maybe if you're already down that much, it depends on how much you know you're you're willing to lose. But I would give it down to like one dollar. I mean it seems like we have some support down here at some of these dips down to like 108, 109, 105 ish. So it seems like it's trying to hold that level. 50 SMA is sitting at like 120. It's in, a, it's in a better spot now if you're looking to take an entry. So I don't if you're looking if you have patience and you're fine with it selling here i mean i don't know until it drops below one maybe that's kind of like your your threshold um okay still bullish on solo yeah i mean i i don't i don't uh let me, let's pull this one up i don't have it right now however it's kind of holding up around the six bucks so if, as long as six holds for right now seems fine to me you know that's just kind of my take on it i mean i think a y i if i had to pick between solo and a y r o um what is a y r o this is back below seven now. I like AYRO personally better. Um, so that's just kind of my take. Um, but I think a if AYRO pushes up, it'll probably bring Solo with it, kind of like a sympathy play in a sense. So um, let's see. HJLI, I love. HJLI is a, is, a, is a play that I, it's one of those where it's like, I mean, I, I w I'm going to save some powder to buy more if we get a further dip. But I'm personally not a huge, like, not a huge, it's a patience play. The HJLI is a perfect example of a stock. This is like a traditional swing for me. So the way the market's been the past, like, six plus months has been kind of crazy. I mean, really, I mean, obviously, as end of the summer into the early fall months was kind of, like, shaky. It wasn't as good. But since then, so, like, December through now, market, you know, has been pretty good. And obviously, up until, like, last week. But, um... HJLI is a traditional type of swing where I buy into this one, it dips, it dips, it dips, or it kind of sits where it's at and it's a patience play, you're waiting for news. So these are the these are my favorite swings um, I like because when you get that news, sometimes it doesn't work out, but many times you get these spikes and so you're playing for the spike. So for example, you know, OVID was a swing that I had um, a while back. Now I sold most of it because I was in from like 250, the thing went up to like four bucks. I sold most of my shares and then I eventually just cut it, but it actually wouldn't have been a, a terrible re-add last week or this week because it's now holding the 50 SMA. And then guess what? Had news. 
And that news today sends it, thing, uh, sends it to $6.11. You take a look at this gap. Why was this a, a, a swing trade that I liked weeks ago? Well, because the gap sets us up here. That Look at this gap all the way back up to 6 bucks, and where did it hit? 6 11 So that's the type of play that I like. Now, sometimes, you know, if it makes a solid run, I take my profits and move on, right? I, I want to move on to something else. So that's kind of my take. It came back down, could have re-added, but I just didn't, I wasn't paying attention, so it didn't do it. But the news, the news patience, it, a lot of the times with these with these bottomed out swings, it's a patience play onto news. Sometimes you can time it where you get in and you get kind of lucky where they drop news the next week or the next day. Other times, um, <laughs> you're waiting for months. So, you know, it's, it's just kind of how it works. And I'm like, ADTX, ADTX, man, was like, this one was, uh, let's pull this by the way out. Let's, where is it? Where is it? ADTX. You know, I think I was in this one back in here, and it was like waiting from early November, maybe even late October, all the way until we had to go until 20. We got, we got a pop right here. I think I sold there, but we didn't get news, I believe, until like, you know, 2021. So it took months for that type of play. That's a patience play, though. That's the type of swings that I used to trade. And I, you know, a lot of the times, the way that it kind of works out, it's not like you're going to be going up every single day on, on those types of swings. It's like, with that my account would be work, would work, you know, early on when I was growing it, it would kind of just go like it would trickle down for like a couple, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, depending upon, you know, what, what I'm in. And then it would, you know, we get a spike on news or a catalyst, right? We get a spike and then it pops up to the next level, trickles back down a little bit and then pops again. Like that's kind of the nature of how my account was, you know, a while back. Meanwhile, though, ADTX actually is not in a bad spot. So if you like ADTX for a swing, uh, it's holding that three bucks. I would give it down to like three dollars or so but it's holding the low threes very nicely as of right now. So, um, but back to KMPH, um, I think it's, we'll see how it opens up today. That was big news. There's some pretty significant price targets out. If we take a peek, um, reason why, I think these price targets, these, I think these are potentially factoring in disapproval. So they're targeting 28 bucks, 24, or some of these PTs, just, you know, just not that it matters at all, but you know, that's something to note too. So it could get a bigger run in the next couple of days. I think there was, what, what I noticed too, is that there's a lot of people, there was a lot of people who were in this stock who, you know, on social media. So it's, there's a lot of kind of chatter and a lot of kind of, I don't want to say hype, but to a degree. And so <clears throat> when that happens, usually when you get the news spike or when you get something like this, everyone's getting out, everyone's selling, and then eventually things take some time and then it eventually, you know, resumes to the upside if that news is, is super substantial. I don't know enough about the news to say, oh, you know, this is this is massive, massive, massive. It's going to go to, you know, 30 bucks. I don't know enough to that degree. But some people who know more are very, very bullish on it still. Um, PLTR is a stock that I'm going to be probably buying some more of in my long term today. So I do like PLTR. Where is it? I have it in here, but it's in the IRA. So it's not going to, sh it shows up here. But here's my buy range. Watching KMPH, Cone, yeah, OB, those are the top three, right? The top three gainers of the day. KMPH is, um, this one is going to be a potential kind of, grind, I would say, a potential grinder for the day. So we'll see how it opens up. You might get a, a kind of a sell at the open, and then we'll see how it goes. OVID, let's see how this one's doing. It's pulling back, but this one could, you know, eventually make a push back up, um, and we'll see. And then Cone earnings. I mean, this thing hit 50 bucks. This thing was trading at 17 yesterday. It hit $51 here. So after earnings, it can probably go to the one minute chart to get a better view. If you're looking for scalps, I mean, Cone seems to be the one um, I would say that has that type of volatility because we take a peek. What's the float on this one? Cone's got, oh my, it's got a 0.5 million share float. If that's, if that's, if that's accurate, that's nuts. So Cone, if I had to pick a stock for the day, this could be the massive monster runner of the day. And they had, they just crushed earnings, so a killer. Scalping the three, it opens. I potentially may take a fun little trade in, in Cone because I think this has, this has potential to be the runner of the day. Um, it's currently the, the number one gainer, and when you get a stock over 100% in pre-market, now, I'm not the I'm not the, the biggest momentum J trader, but just from seeing stuff, when you get a stock like that, many times that could be your runner of the day. Over 100% pre-market is kind of like that, that threshold for like, okay, can we take it up? Can it go further? Probably has a, a good shot. I'm not in DPW right now, personally. Um, I cut this one. I, I actually, let's see, where where is it holding up right now? Yeah, I cut it because I didn't like it under four, I don't think. 
but here's a decent range. I put this kind of range, it's in this range if you want it low. I would give it down to like 350 or so. Um, I cut it, I believe, when it fell below this five and then it came down below four and I kind of gave it a day and then I sold it on a pop and, and, moved, and just moved on from it personally. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Could always get back in. That's the way I think about it. I'm not in too many swings. I, I sold Fold yesterday. Um, what's Fold doing? It's at 1130. I, because it kind of cracked below this line. Yeah, it, I, I could give it a bigger leash and it could kind of consolidate. But I wanted to see it kind of reverse and push up yesterday and the day before on Monday. And it didn't do that. So I'm going to move on. I mean, we can always get, you can always get back in. So if Fold kind of holds up and develops some support here in the, low, in the 11 area, I'll get back in. But I'm kind of giving these swings, you know, I'm giving them a little bit of a tighter leash now than I'm entering them now. Other stuff that I've been in, I'm kind of, you know, letting it go a little bit. Um, I don't know if Rocket's going to be tanking back to where it was. I think Rocket's going to be, um, we'll see how, it, how today goes. I don't think, uh, what's it doing? I, don't th I think it's coming down, right? It's Yeah, it's at 30, it's down 10% pre-market. So I don't think um, Rocket's going to be a huge, we'll see. If it holds 35, it, it, I think that could be okay. That could be a decent area to watch, but we'll see. Um, UWMC, let's pick, take a peek at that. This one is a funny one. I've been in this guy uh, in my long term. And yeah, look at that. 1249 we hit here in UWMC. Wow. Okay. That's fun because I'm looking at probably, not probably, but I'm probably going to sell um, a chunk or most, if not all of my UWMC, because I got my average down to like 10 bucks or so, because it was down under like, under like eight bucks a couple days ago. Probably going to get rid of the rest of that and then just kind of take that money and probably put it into like PLTR, put it into like FRX, some of the other stocks I like for like a longer term swing um, for right now. Uh, you know, I, we'll see. Once these kind of, once Rocket and UWMC kind of cool off a little bit, I think things will get, they'll settle down and then you can re-enter them when they settle down. Maybe maybe UWMC goes to 20 bucks before it comes back to like 15 and settles. So that's kind of the risk you run, but I'm, I'm fine with taking some money. And moving it into something else. I didn't have a huge, huge size in those. So, um, no one's the market because Bill. That's the other thing, too, is that the whole stimulus stuff going on, right? <clears throat> I think when you have like, once the checks actually hit everyone's, you know, accounts, that's when we can really start to see some more crazy volatility. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But I think that could be when things get really, really crazy. So, um, we will see. And, uh, VISL is another stock that I'm swinging to I have like a $4 average. I actually was buying this thing before yesterday, got news yesterday. So I bought a little bit more, uh, and I'll buy more on dips. So I want to, I want VISL to probably be my, one of my biggest swings. If it does dip back down towards like three bucks, it'll be probably one of my biggest swings ever because just my account's grown. So I'm, you know, sizing up accordingly, but that's probably one that I like. That's one that I like a lot longer term though. Not just like you know, two, two week, three week swing, you know, um, scalp UWMC from nine. That's nice. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I was, uh, I didn't, um, get the paper hands and sell out of this guy, you know, when it was under, under eight bucks. So, uh, it, it, it wasn't a huge position, but it worked out pretty nice, I guess, in the long term. So it's, it's another one of those patients plays too. Like UWMC, right, was dropping, dropping, dropping. But what fundamentally changed about the company? Nothing. If anything, they had great earnings that I liked. And I was like, awesome, right? And then it just kept dipping. Um, and now because Rocket, now here we go. And I believe, yeah, here's the markets now open. So look at this massive candle to the upside for UWMC. And I believe too, um, Rocket, Rocket helping out. Look at this massive gap that it's got. Um, rocket pushing up definitely helps. And I believe the CEO is going to try to get on to, um, Kramer's show. So we'll see if he gets on there. That could be, that could be interesting. Okay. Let's look at spy really quick and see how this is opening up. Another thing too, is that if, if you were to take a, if I was to take a trade, like a day trade right now, I wouldn't, wouldn't be doing anything right, right at the open, let things settle out for a little bit, unless there's a crazy dip, you know? Um, let's see, let's see. Crypto may rise. Yeah, it could definitely rise. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if these, well, if Bitcoin continues to push back on up. So BTC, USD, let's take a peek. Bitcoin's at 51. Let's take a peek at how the past couple of days have been going. Yeah, it's, it's bouncing a little bit off the off where it was. So I uh, will see. <clears throat> um, let's go back to the gainers on the day. And I mean, if, if, the, pla if the screen is small, I'm, I apologize because 
Um, I usually, oh, is Colton gonna get like, is Colton gonna be like a halt fest? I think it's gonna be a halt fest today. That's ah, not gonna be fun. That's the only thing <clears throat> with some of these low floats that, that you play, right? If it's a super low float, for example, Cone dips down to 36 and then immediately slingshots to 41. But the problem is that it's got such a low float that it's going to get halted because it's going to be so volatile. So they're going to halt this thing for volatility like every, you know, two minutes, it seems like. So we'll see. This is one to watch, though. Uh, and then what happens is that usually when that keeps happening, you get people who are like pissed off and they're like, yeah, I mean, why am I going to be playing a halt all the time when I could just, you know, go go buy something else and not have to worry about a halt? Um you know, so we'll see. We will see um, how this guy opens up. PLTR up a little bit today. Arc, I wonder how Arc. Well, PLTR, I'm not really worried about this one, but where I do want to see it pushing back up is I want to see it getting back up to like 30 bucks. So PLTR, I don't think the run, or I don't really care too much or t about what happens until it gets over 30. That's when I'm like, okay, this thing may uh, may get a little, a little interesting right now. But it's also just a, a longer term, bigger picture type of swing. Um, so now the market's green. It's going to be the bouncing around a lot. looks like, okay, let's take a look at the five minute again. Market's green, pretty nice candle on spy recovering off of the lows from a few, just, you know, about 20 minutes ago, really. Um, oil stuff. I have some USEG still. I have, what else do I have? I have HUSA. HUSA I think is good down where it's at. 50 SMA is holding it up too as support, so I think it's it's pretty solid. It's gonna be it's gonna take some time. I mean, I think these are gonna be some potential patience plays unless we get some other oil news and a quick spike in oil. These are probably patience plays. Um, KMPH 1519. Let's take a peek at that. Yep, we got a nice little pop. That was nice. That was a nice little scalp there because now it's popping up and it's at back over 17. This thing gets over like over 18, and I think this can get going. So this is one to watch too, especially as, as Cone, right, the number one gainer on the day, is halted. So as this one's halted, you know, you want to watch the other the, the next kind of best gainers on the day. So KMPH is currently number two, and then OVID is number three, although OVID is still kind of falling off to where it's, uh, it's you know, sewering in a sense. So we'll see how those progress. Um, outside of that, what is going on? VISL is doing whatever. I don't really care. Nothing that's nothing that that's super scalpable in terms of my. What I like to do in terms of my scalps is that like I'd rather personally scalp my own positions because I've been watching them, so I know the ranges that they've been in. That's kind of just my take on how I scalp. Um, maybe we get into more of scalping some of these bigger runners. We'll see. But I mostly like to scalp stuff that I've been watching, either it's on my watch list, I've been noticing it for a while, um, and I see all of a sudden, for example, like HUSA, let's say HUSA dips to like $2.10, that's where I'll take a, a, you know, I'll double my position at 210 and immediately look to sell half at like 220 just for a quick like 10 cent scalp or something like that, you know, that's kind of the nature of the scalps I, I play as a swing focused trader, so, you know, and, and that could change as, as the market conditions change, but we'll see. New all trading mostly got nothing to do. Okay. Um, where can I start getting some nuggets? So I think the best place is to start, hopefully, right? The the intention with the channel is, and, the, and the playlist is to have a bunch of great places to kind of go to, to kind of understand and, and start, right? So the playlist that I would recommend would be if you're looking to get into like swing trading, you can look into the, those playlists. If you're looking to just start to figure out how to find stocks, you're like, okay, like what do I even, like where do I even find a stock to buy? Because I think... You kind of kind of find your stock that you like that you have a you know you build up a thesis on it or you build up hey I like this chart setup it's it's you know fairly cheap or whatever you you kind of like about it and then you can dive into developing a trading plan which then you can dive into kind of more strategy videos that I hopefully you know have so I would recommend the playlist on how to find stocks to buy as like the best playlist that I would have in terms of finding the stocks and then I have tons of other videos and swing trading related stuff too so. Um, KMPH filled at, that's nice. It got halted too, right? So this thing is, now it's halted as well. So we had two halts, right? Already we had the top two gainers are halted, which is, I guess, good, but we'll see how they open back up and see what happens. Another thing too is that I'm probably going to make a video soon, um, on hotkeys because I've been using them. Look at this. Here goes cone. Cone's up and it's probably going to get halted again. Cone immediately opens up and now it's up to 46. We'll see how cone does here. 
honestly wouldn't be a terrible terrible trade. Um, this is a scalp fest if you want. Um, if, if you're if you're someone who's fast, Cone's a potentially a, a beautiful play. But if Cone breaks over this 51, this is a, a key thing to watch too. Uh, I think it may get halted. Yeah, it's halted again, it looks like. Or no, it's not. Um, but if Cone breaks over 51, then that's going to be a, a potential bigger move in store. So we're watching that. Um, let's see. CTRM news. CTRM had news. Pushed up. Hit over a dollar. So CTRM is coming back, right? Or it has, uh, No, it's been kind of doing its thing, but it's back to where it's... it's been kind of flat so it's trying to hold up in the 90s and we'll see if it can hold up in the 90s but until it gets i want to see it get back over like 110 personally for ctrm for me to be like okay this is interesting um that's my my take okay cone's back to fi oh here we go here look at this cone is going to be going over 51 over 51 this thing can, it's probably going to get halted again i would think unless it kind of slows down for a second or two um but yeah, so see that resistance though. See, it's that currently that's resistance up around 51 is the area to, to be watching on cone for sure. And it's probably going to pop. It looks like it wants to pop it. So we'll see if it, if it can go. Yeah, this, I mean, 50, there it is. 52.03 now the new high, at least we're seeing right now. It's in, I mean, I'm not, I would, I would think cone has the potential to go to like a hundred bucks today. I would not be surprised to see cone at a hundred bucks. Because the float, the float's half a million shares, and that's just insane. So I mean, I'm not someone who wants to, you know, chase this thing. I'm not. That's not my style. But if you are quick into scalping, this could be a beautiful play. VWAP at like 47.52. So if it comes down to like 48, could be a decent spot to grab something. And like, if you're quick and you can immediately sell at like, well, I mean, what's 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 the percentage move, right? If, if you think about it, right? You going from 48 bucks to 50 bucks? It's not bad. It's like four percent, but it's not terrible. And there it goes. So you're gonna get you're gonna get volatility up and down. All it takes though on a stock like this, if somebody's got a, a fat chunk of shares, a quick market sell, and they can just kill it. <laughs> like you can see a halt down in like no time, you know, on something like that. If somebody wants to do that, you know, which is that's that's the the risk you always run, right? Somebody can do that at any time. Okay, let's see. Um, carve and cone two to watch carve runs with cone too let's see let's see what carve is doing um carve is stock i think i i don't know if i've traded it before but i remember i remember it from from the past yeah not really moving too much but i think carves are fairly low float as well um ocgn's going they had news i believe too they're up a good well they're up from yesterday right yeah they're up from well no this morning sorry up from this morning's pop hitting 14 and it's come back down. See if it can get back above. It looks like it's trying to do something though. It's trying to do, you know, somewhat of a downtrend break for right now. So it's trying to get there. It looks like it might. Cone too risky. Yeah, I mean, that's not, not for, I mean, it's, it's for more experienced people, I would say for sure. Because if you're, if you're taking shots at cone, right, you have to understand the significant risk. And then if you're, you know, kind of a, if you're not experienced and you're someone who's going to sell on a, on a $2 drop on cone, right? You know, understand that this thing could drop $10 in a matter of seconds, you know, literally because of the float. So if you're not willing to take that, then you just, just it, you're probably better off just not even touching it. But it's trying to hold up around this 45 area consolidated there before in the, in the um, pre-market hours. That's a nice scalp on KMPH in that's over two bucks. KMPH could be the one now that I'm thinking about it because Cone seems to be a little too dangerous. KMPH is a low float too, but I don't think it's that low. Um, it's definitely not that low. Um, let's see. Four million. So it's a little bit better and it's a higher price stock. Oh, well, Cone's up there too. Oh, Cone's even higher, but generally a fairly higher higher price, uh, over like 10 bucks and you're, and you're talking under, you know, under a 10 million float. That's pretty kind of crazy, but... You don't see many of those, but this could be a decent play. If it comes back down towards the VWAP, and that's another video too I'm, I'm going to probably be making at some point, is the VWAP, how to trade VWAP. And we'll, we'll get some good examples, hopefully. Um, today, uh, we'll see if we can get some VWAP dips. Like So can PH now coming down? Like see some of these candles, like a full dollar drop. <laughs> you know, that's kind of crazy. 
PLTR entry. I, uh, VISL is an interesting spot. I have a, don't worry about my average, but VISL, if it comes down, I think anything under four bucks is probably okay. Um, ideally down closer to three bucks, I would love to get, but it looks like, you know, that's, it's trying to, you know, potentially hold up <clears throat> in the mid threes for the next leg. So we'll see. And then PLTR, where is my PLTR? Um, it's actually up today, barely. Where it's at, right here's the buy range for me. Anything under like 27 bucks, I think is solid. You know, don't really want to see it dropping below the low we had on the 2nd of December, which is like 21. Don't really want to see it going there. But at the same time, this is also not like, this is less of a technical play for me and more of just like a longer term swing um, or even just a longer term hold too. So that's at least my take. Um, KMPH 15s back in the 15s now. So let's take a peek at this guy. So yeah, here, here's where it's at. So this could be a decent idea. I might just take, I might take just for fun. Let's see. Let's see what we can do for fun. I would say it's not a terrible spot. I mean, I'll take the L if I, if I have to, um, I'll play it down to like, I'll play it for a dollar loss. Worst case scenario. So I'll buy 50 shares right here at like, 1590 ish 95 i'll just set an order if it fills it fills if i miss it i miss it yeah i'm gonna miss it now it's, it's gonna go up but i would say that i would risk cam ph down to like 15 or really 1485 would be because that's like some of these these dips in pre-market under that it could come down a lot more so that's where i would risk it down to um so we can maybe have a little bit of fun on a quick little fun scalp um and, and that's not something i I do much, very much of it all. So I go very, I would go very small on, on these types of things just for fun. Um, what else am I watching? The ISL down 7%. If I caught the, could have caught that or something. CRBP is getting a little bit, a uh, little dippage. CRBP is a stock I grabbed some yesterday. I would like to see it holding the 50 SMA. So I don't want to see CRBP under two bucks. That's my CRBP, you know, thoughts. CRBP under two bucks is a no-go for me. So we will see. Let's see if this ever gets filled. It may not. It may not come back below 16 again. So, But that's just kind of the nature of my entries. I try to be pretty greedy on that. Ped's getting a little pop here. Ped's pushing up. I wonder what's going on here. Ped, that's that's nice. I have a decent amount. Well, I have a little bit of Ped. So we will see. This one, I'm kind of just still waiting on this one to kind of recover off the wall. Ped's at the 50 SMA as well. So Ped's in a decent spot. Um, let's see. Okay, we are now in KMPH at like 16. So I'll play it down to 15 worst case. Maybe I'll add 50 more there. And if I, you know, want to. Um, we're looking for a, a pop back up to like 17 bucks plus. We'll see. Um, okay. <clears throat> So you get in and out. That's the name of the game, in and out. Um, I'll put the, I'll even put the sell up just so I have it ready. Um, I'll put it at like, I'll literally put it at like 1693 or something. Just if it, if it wants to go and pop without me from not paying attention. <clears throat> but like, see how the idea behind this, and this is not my, you know, a huge focus for me in mind trading, but like, see how like we're looking at where it's at right now. Look at where KMPH is at. It had support here a lot. It found support down around this 16, the upper 15s, around 15, worst case, for, for quite some time in the pre-market. So we'll see if it holds again. If it doesn't hold that again, that's kind of my my technical indicator to get out, you know? Um, did you get a referral for the Yada Bank link? It didn't populate the referral code when I clicked it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I did. Um, I think with the Yada Bank, you get like 100 tickets or something too for referrals. So we'll see. I haven't noticed at least. I haven't been alerted of it. I can I can check that later though. Um, ONTX, too many bag holders. That's the thing. ONTX is a, I don't want to say it was a pump, but I saw a lot of chatter on social media about ONTX. So when you see that, it's kind of like, okay, you know, on any spikes, that's when everyone tries to get out. And then that's, you know, usually a good time to potentially get in on, on dips. So that's at least my signal. Okay, so now KMPH is coming back down. So we'll see. We'll see if it holds 15-ish or not. And if it does, I'm staying in. Um, constant support, yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, let's see. I think it's I think KMPH is if you're if you want a low risk day trade, I think it's in a pretty good spot. But again, I'm not recommending that anyone do that. VISL is coming down. So VISL, I'll be interested to potentially be buying more on, on this thing if it dips. But the market's, oh, well, okay, so Dow's up, barely, but the S&P is down. So, you know, I guess <laughs> Dow's kind of flat from the open. S&P has been dipping a little bit further, so we'll see. Market's been weird. This is, this is the type of stuff that, like, I was, not that, like, I, you know, what, who do I, what do I care, right? But at the end of the day, like, you know, we had such a massive run on Monday and it's like, now we're kind of just retracing the steps back, which is not a big deal, but like, okay, we're just retracing the steps. Well, I would have been more, I would have been, it would have been more kind of, I guess, boring if, if, it, if we kind of just grind it up, but like, I would have been fine with more of like a small day up, a small day up and then maybe like down today or something like that, you know? I'm kind of just waiting for, you know, we're waiting for somewhat of a stable, stable, stabilized market to a degree. Now, are we ever going to get it? I don't know, eventually, but we'll see. Yeah, so like KMPH now, if we can look at the uh, five-minute chart, it's a little bit easier to see. See, it's kind of bottoming. So we've got a green candle coming in. Now it's bottoming out here down in the, in the you know, see how it found support? We got a wick down. Buyers came in, brought it right back up, and now it's pushing back up over 16. So... That's a, that's a, now the VWAP's up around 1650. So yeah, you need to get a better push. I have a, I have an order just shy of 17. So, I mean, other thing too, this could be a bigger grinder on the day, depending upon how this news really kind of settles into the market. Um, for sure. But I'm not the way, way that I, the way that I see stuff is that I, I just trade the, I trade the tickers. I don't, I don't care about the, the companies. Like, you know, I think to a degree, that's the, if you're looking for numbers on a screen, best way to kind of be consistently profitable. That's probably the best way to think about it because there's so much stuff too. Like there's like that LTNC or something like that. Everyone's been talking about nothing against that stock. I'm just saying like, this is an example, right? I saw, I've seen so many people, you know, going on and on about this stock, why this company is so good, why it's the best, but the price action in the past, or at least like Monday or Tuesday, right? Wasn't, wasn't great. So it's like, for me, it's like that, that's a waste of my time because I'm going to be so entrenched in like mentally, right? Worrying about this stock, like, oh my gosh, like I got to, you know, this company, why is it going down? I, I believe in it. Where it's like, if it's a long-term play, you buy it and you forget about it and you hold it for the long term. You check in once in a while to make sure things are going well. If it's a trade, if the price action is no longer fitting the thesis of the trade, then you just get out. Like, you know, like I don't, I, I don't, care like at all like if, if all of a sudden like the second the way i think about it, the second i know too much about the company the second i know too much about the ceo's like wife or like you're diving that deep into like what's going on behind the scenes that's when you're you're in too deep like i think now to a degree could there be some some diamonds you know or some gold you know you can find there you, sure but i mean that's like the type of stuff that's like for me it's a waste of time and you're just going to mentally drain yourself out of it kmph coming up we'll see if we get a well, now we're going to potentially potentially hit seven. I want to see 17 again. If I get that, then I'll be out. And that'd be a nice little, you know, whatever it was, like a few bucks. <laughs> Not even. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What else is going on? Not, honestly, um, market's bouncing a tiny bit. NASDAQ on the down on the down days has been, has been taking the biggest brunt of the of the of the hits. Ovid curl potential. Yeah, Ovid looking like if it gets above VWAP, so it's got to get back above like 450, and then it, Ovid has a, a shot to curl back on up. So we'll see. Now, what's going to end up happening, I can tell you right now, is that KMPH is going to hit my cell, and then it's going to go to like 20 bucks. <laughs> but, you know, you can't, you can't do that. You can't think about that. Because what I've always said, too, is that every time that I, I look back on a stock that I was going to sell for a profit earlier... Every time I look back, you know, yes, there's a few examples and there's a few times where, yeah, you, you were wrong to sell that early, right? But there's many more times in my experience that I'll look back and say, why didn't I just take profits? Why didn't I just take profits? And for example, one of those stocks is PLM, actually, and we can take it. It's, it's still looking okay. Like it's, it's holding up the uptrend for me. It's fine. It's above my average, not a big deal. But I had this line in here at 540 as of resistance. And looking back, I'm like, why didn't I just take profits? It was up over a dollar and twenty cents from my average. 
why didn't I just take profits there? And I could have reloaded it. I could have rebought it back here and played it again. So, you know, that's an example of like, <laughs> you could play one stock, you know, a million times too. So I always look back at that, those situations and I'm like, you know what? Every time I, I think back, it's, it's definitely always just better just to take profits or at least, you know, from, from my experience. Okay, so KMPH, just push this thing up. Someone slap this thing, get it up 50 cents and then we can move on. Not that I, you know, not that I mean with any, you know, crazy amount, but um, <clears throat> we'll see if the market, I wonder if the market's going to come back today and push up and uh, be green across the board. Mindset less. Yeah. Swing trading, I'm telling you guys, for most people is, is the way to start. If you want to, if you go end up doing well with your swings, then you can start like dabbling into scalping. And the way that I see it is that the best way to learn to scalp is to start scalping your own swings. So trade, you know, buy a, a quarter amount. Like let's say, you know, you have a, a ten thousand dollar account or lots whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, let's say your swing positions are like a thousand dollars. So let's say I have a thousand dollars in, for example, like you know, comms is an example, right? Let's say I have, let's say I have a thousand bucks in comms. All of a sudden, I notice comms is down, you know, five percent today. Market's up, you know, and I see it just kind of wick down. I'll snag it if I can get it as low as possible. I'll snag comms down five percent and look to sell. Maybe I buy another, you know, thousand dollars worth, but I look to sell that thousand dollars up two percent. I take my one two percent and I start scalping a little bit on top of my core position or something along those lines. Or you see a big dip, you buy the dip, you know, you lower your average, you sell into like a five percent pop or whatever it is, depending upon the stocks you trade, and then you rinse and repeat, and move on. And then you know, eventually you can get into scalping or playing these bigger runners, and these are where the money's at. I mean, this is where people make a ton of money. KMPH, for example, right? Uh, Cone today. Cone's dipping back down. KMPH is like two cents away from hitting my sell. And of course, it's not going to do it. <laughs> um, Scout plays for the win. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm i pumped. This is why I think you got to you, know, you gotta have more <clears throat> more tools in the arsenal. I mean, on, 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 on to your arsenal. Because if you don't, then, you know, if you're just a swing trader that's long biased, then that, that's fine, you know. And I've done fine with that the past like 18 months, even just penny stocks. People think, oh, you swing trade penny stocks. Like how? That's what I do. It's worked. But, um, you know, if you start to add in other things, then you can profit in months where, or traditionally, right, the summer months are not that great. So in the summer months, it's probably a really good scalp time, right? Or even just short bias, right? If you want to go short bias or you want to scalp, right? That's a, a, a good time to then, okay, say, you know what? Maybe I'll go small on my swings. I only keep one or two, three swings in the background. And the rest of the time I'm scalping for like a 2% here and there. And if I can make a couple percent off my scalps, I'm, I'm happy, you know? So it, it's all relative. I think it's it's much better to go through periods when things slow down. Yeah, my, my sell order just hit. Um, it's going to adjust the screen in a second. So that was fun, a dollar. <clears throat> that was fun. Um, a, dollar, a dollar scalp on uh, KMPH. Now it'll go to 20 bucks, right? We'll, we'll be watching. I'll go to 20 bucks. Uh -huh. Market open. Yeah, that the market opens when it's so vault, when it's most volatile. So you get those overreactions up, down, left, right, whatever. And that's when you can take advantage of it. So I think it's fun. Like if it's good, and the, that's why the day traders, I think, I think really have it best to a degree, right? If you're a swing trade focused or even a long-term investor, I think to do really well, um, you got to spend time. You got to be researching. You got to be, you know, sticking to plans, things like that. Whereas the day traders can come in, no technicals and, and no, you know, basic news and understand how, you know, stocks move off of that and come in for the first half hour, first hour of the day and, and <laughs> make their money. And, and then they, all right, I'm going out for the day. I'm, I'm done. Like, that's fun. Like, that's got to be, you know, and then, then, then there's some people who are like, I'm going to trade all day, you know, many times, at least Eastern time. Um, once you get to like 11 a.m. Eastern to like 2 p.m. Eastern, it gets pretty quiet. So that's not the time I'd recommend looking to trade stuff um, at all. <laughs> I have, uh, back when I was like trying to go through and, and try to do more day trades, um, that's what I would, I learned that the hard way. I would make some money in the pre-market and then I would lose it all after that. <laughs> so, all right, what is we, what do we got going on? UWMC, um, let's see, that's just dipped up the open. This could be a decent bounce play too. <clears throat> UWMC over this VWAP right here, which is at like 1085, could get a pop. I mean, that's a, probably a, a fair 
a fair scalp for at least 15 cents back to 11 and maybe if it you know if it gets above VWAP so we'll see let's go scanning down the gainer list riot's up there so we had bitcoin i guess pushing a little bit right because bitcoin's been up a little bit but riot's been pulling back ever since the open um what else do we have htbx is a funny one this thing popped a little bit today trxc i think someone was mentioning i think someone was mentioning trxc for a swing I, here's the thing with, with these stocks off of news right i assume they had news because it popped this much i don't like trading them or swinging them after news like that I mean, TRXC a couple days ago was a better setup because it was putting in higher lows. It was trying to consolidate right here. Yeah, around four bucks or under four was pretty good and you made your 20% right now today. And so that's where I look to scale out. Really, I would be scaling out in the pre-market when this thing hit you know, over five bucks, but that's kind of my take. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about potentially doing a Wednesday type of thing as like a, you know, making it more of like a every Wednesday morning type of, you know, go for go live for like an hour or so and just, you know, for the open. Um, Why well, did I stop day trading? Because I was not good about uh, good with it. <laughs> I was most, I, I quickly realized, that's why I recommend the um, having a trading journal. So I'd be logging my trades and day trades, obviously, if you're taking a lot of scalps, it's, it's tougher to log all your trades, right? But as a beginner, it's, there's value there. Um, I, lo I was doing it and I was like, okay, I'm losing money on my day trades, but I'm making money on my swings. Let's stop day trading. <laughs> that was, that was it. And so I pretty, I got pretty, you know, disciplined in just stopping it. Um, do I still have the urge that, yeah. And so you guys saw with KMPH, but I'm not going in big. So like, for example, okay, that worked out, right? KMPH scalp for a dollar worked out today, right? But I went with 50 shares. So, you know, my max, my account is like 50,000, right? So the position size that I'll go in is like 10% max position size for any given stock. So the max size is $5,000, but I'll only do that on a bottom setup swing because I know my risk rewards so much better. On stocks that are up off of news on day trades, right? Look at the downside you have on KMPH. If we go back to the daily chart, yes, I understand the news, there's more here, but it could come right back down, fill the gap to the downside and come back down to 10 bucks. So you're, you're risking a significantly you know larger amount. So that's why I just, for me, my setup, my mind just doesn't work as well with the day trades, um, you know, but the scalps, you know, scalping my own swings and maybe even scalping some of these types of moves off of bottoms is not terrible. Um, SNDL, let's take a peek at SNDL. Um, I, I think SNDL is okay as long as it holds this 135, which it's trying to do. Um, watch Tilray, T-L-R-Y, watch this guy. Tilray is trying to potentially curl yesterday. It tried to and then pulled back. So this is one to watch for sure to kind of lead the pack here. So that's what I'd be watching. Um, I have CRBP actually, which is down from where I have it, but it's looking okay holding the 50 SMA. So I'm not super worried about CRBP. Um, I, SNDL, there is risk though there. The problem, the reason why I didn't, I picked CRBP instead of SNDL. Um, SNDL is, is, is seemingly heavy. And the way I see that and the way you kind of, and, and it's kind of like a barcode, barcode-y stock. When, when I say barcode, look at these types of moves. This is just like all like algos and it's, it's just not, it's being held back. It's not getting let free. So it's a very kind of thick float as of right now, it seems like. It's trading very heavy, right? It's not making a, making big moves. Um, but if it holds the, the mid 130s, I think it's okay. Other than that, it could come down to $1 and I would still see that as okay. But the risk here with SNDL is they have a shelf offering, so they could do another offering at any point, and that's the that's the risk that I see with SNDL, um, you know. So that's what I'd be careful of. Market looks like it's coming down a little bit right now, bouncing a little bit, but it was coming down a second ago. Um, yeah, I'm sure the Twitter guys will go to pump. That's the thing too. When you find stocks, so what I like to do too, another, another idea for certain scalp trades, I wouldn't go in heavy with some of these trades, but if you find people on Twitter who have, you know, 100,000 plus followers, right? These, these bigger people on Twitter, if you're following them and they're talking about a stock, you know, like last week, like for example, ONTX. Uh, ONTX, I think right now is, oh, down, this could be a scalp right here. ONTX down 7% today, 
right, is a stock that I've seen a lot of guys on Twitter talk about, okay? Now, they talk about ONTX back when it was up here, back when it was like when it pushed to 193. Now, maybe they sold and maybe they, they took your, you know, they sold into you, right? Maybe. But if they didn't, if they're still bag holding, if they're kind of holding some some shares, I can almost guarantee you at some point, somebody's going to tweet about ONTX and it's going to get like a 5% pop, guaranteed. You know, so is it is is today a terrible day to be looking to grab some or, you know, maybe not, not a terrible idea. So... This is actually a fun one too, and I may do it just for fun and see. Let's take a peek if we want to scalp this one too. It could be a fun little scalp. Um, another thing too is that I'm about to be switching my account over, so I'm going to have to go all cash very soon um, in this account and then switch it to margin because I've had it as a cash account for a, for a while, but I now need to go back to margin, so I don't have to worry about the settled cash. So that's one of the issues for day trading as well. You really got to have, I would say, you know, it's it's a lot, the things get a little bit easier when you have um, full margin abilities. Now I'm not using margin, but like having a margin account. <clears throat> yeah, and, and as, as time goes on, you'll, you'll adapt and figure out what style works best for you. I think swings are, are, are a solid, you know, a solid style. FRX, I love. I, um, I love FRX. I'm gonna be buying a ton of that. In my long-term account, I'm probably going to look to sell other stuff today, tomorrow, uh, on a green day, um, and and get get more FRX. I think that's just a, that's in my IRA too. My IRA is like FRX, PLTR, two of the bigger ones in the IRA. Um, I like those. Uh, let's see, ABIO. This was a this one was an interesting one. It's been getting pumped, I think, too. ABIO just popped up. It's I do like it though. It's a low float stock any news on ABIO and they have um, news coming at some point. We're just not sure when that's going to, when that's going to drop, but this thing popped yesterday, almost back to five. I have an average right where it's at. So, I mean, if it comes down to low fours, I'll buy more is my take on ABIO. Um, but back to ONTX, I don't think that's a terrible idea um, for a scalp, little scalp trade idea, because just cause that's like I was saying, like this thing is down 7%, right? Market's down a half percent. So you can kind of see already there's a somewhat of a mismatch. Now, again, when the market's down, a lot of the small caps, a lot of these stocks will come down a lot more than the overall market. So that's never like, oh, you know, never a guarantee. But if you think about it, right? If you're watching this stock, you know it's a stock that has been getting pumped for a while. So the thing goes down big. Not a terrible idea. It's not a, you probably have a decently low risk entry here. If, if you could have gotten like 111 or 112, right? Do the math, right? If this thing goes back to 115, right? It's a few percent right there. Now, and, and you could probably go heavier on this trade because what's your risk, right? It's it's not a super high volume stock. It's not super volatile. Your risk is a lot less. So we can, we can check back on this one and see if, if this thesis works out. For example, let's say, let's say you were to buy this thing at 112, right? We saw it down to 111. Let's say you got 112, you know? See if it gets to 115 in the next, you know, 10 minutes and see what happens. We play this move yesterday. Yeah, um, NEPT. Where is NEPT? Where's my NEPT? Um, I have an average right where it's at. Um, it popped yesterday to 172, but I want more on NEPT, so I'm waiting for this thing. The way that I see NEPT is um, an $0.08 cent risk is really the way I see it. So I'll buy a little bit more if it comes down to 150, but it's an $0.08 cent risk in my eyes. So... That is that on NEPT. Uh, and it's kind of an unfound kind of cannabis or weed play as well. I don't think many people know much about it. Um, <laughs> NAKD. NAKD is also one. I don't want to say it's it's a pump and dump, but it's been getting attention on Twitter too. I've been noticing. Um, not much to go off of, but here's a rough kind of downtrend break. Oh, this is NAK. Sorry. NAKD. You want NAKD. And AKD has a similar chart, though, I think. Yeah, it's, I mean, similar. Um, if we take some of these highs and connect them, yeah, I mean, okay, you can draw that line in or you can draw in something like this across the tops of some of these. But yeah, okay, it's not terrible. Um, but it's it's holding up. The way I see it is that it's holding around $1. I wouldn't want to see it dropping much below some of Like, continue to put in higher lows or it's kind of dead, you know, in my eyes. So if it drops below $0.90, cents, that's a cut. So you can risk $0.10 cents if you want, but... It, you know, it's still like 10%, so be careful on that one. Um, it seems like this one's kind of fading off a little bit. So, um, let's see. 
F E Y E. Let's see what do we got for F E Y E. Oh, this thing is kind of coming on back down. So after this spike, so you got here's your kind of yeah, maybe it's try it's gonna try to put in some support down where it's at or drop a little I mean it's still down trending, so maybe it's it's got some support down to like 18, 19 ish. So I would say you can give it a shot here, and then if it drops below these lows, cut it. You know, so you're risking like 70 cents or so. CCIV, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea for a longer term play. Like actually though, like I missed the boat on CCIV a long time ago. I had, you know, I had many opportunities to get in sub 20 bucks. I was watching it. People were saying, hey, you know, check this out. And I just, I was like, yeah, I mean, it's up a lot off, you know, the past couple of days. I'm going to give it, a, you know, chill and I'm not going to do it. And uh, I missed the boat on it. But now it's probably coming back to a much more favorable spot. So it could be good. Um, this blood, like today here on, the market's kind of fading back and giving back all my gains from you, like Monday. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm just seeing if I can find anything else. Um, still up on the week, but yeah, that's I mean that's all that matters. I I think of it as a week to week, um, week to week, you know, time frame. So I'm not worried about the day to day, you know, especially as someone who's a swing trader, right? I don't care if you're going to have red days. You're going to have a lot of red days. You're kind of at the mercy of the market to a degree. It's just that your green days many times can significantly outpace your red days. Um, HCMC. Yeah, I don't know about this one. I have no idea. <laughs> but this is the nature of a lot of these OTC plays, right? Straight up, straight down sometimes. Um, does Bitcoin go lower? I don't know about Bitcoin, right? Let's take a peek at what it's doing right now. If I had to guess, I would say it's. I'm more bullish on it, but yeah, I mean, it's coming back out and reversing up here. I think it makes a shot up to take a shot to these highs. I wouldn't be surprised if it makes a shot to these highs by the end of the week or the weekend um, and goes to 60K. Would not be surprised. So... Um, what else um, is going on? I mean, everything that I see, like everything that I have is red except two stocks. But I mean, that's expected with the market, right? Market's red. You're going to probably be red on most swings. Um, LCKO. Let's pull it up. LCKO. Or LKCO. <clears throat> Pushing up up four percent what does it got going on okay it's a 50 sma bounce so it bounce off of the low ones still in this down here's the downtrend right roughly kind of got to connect some of these sorry got to connect some of these candles so <clears throat> until it gets it back above like 150 ish 160 ish that would be where i would be looking if it to break that downtrend um H-U-S-N. Um, this is a decent looking chart in terms of the trend. So the trend's your friend. So down around four bucks is a better entry. It tried to today though, and it couldn't break above five. So it's got to get above five. H-U-S-N has to get above five to make the next move. So that is the, that's the move. Let's take a peek at Owen, our ONTX idea, right? But look at that. So, I mean, like, I'm just, you know, the type of thing that I'm saying, right? Now, okay, it depends on what you're looking, but if you're ta if you're taking scalps and you want, like, a 2% scalp, you had from 112 to 114. And it's 2 cents, sounds stupid, sounds like why, wasting your time, but if you had, you know, that's, that's, that's almost, like, free money all the time because this, this is, like, there. When you get an overreaction downside move, now of course if the market plummets and just drops out the floor, yeah, you just keep coming down. But you know, you had a two cent scalp. That that's the type of scalp that I I see as like a higher percentage two percent scalp. Now, if you're going to scalp the bigger nut, the bigger runners of the day, then yes, you can make a lot more. Like you're looking for probably 10, 20, sometimes more. You know, on a scalp even, you know, percent. Um, but there's a significantly higher downside risk. Then if you're scalping overreaction sell-offs, 
stocks like that. And you can't go in massive size on some of those, but you know, you can still make a, you know, you can make a, a few bucks and it's not a terrible way to bolster your account on, you know, on days where you're red or days where things are slow. Son. This one was one that I, I liked a while back. How did she do? Okay, she's back to a decent range, S-O-N-N. Yeah, I would like to dive in a little bit deeper into this one, but this is not in a bad spot. Down around this 220-ish area holds up. That's a good idea. That's definitely a good idea. Back to Because it popped off the 220 last time, and it went to 340-something, so a solid move of a dollar on a... If you get a move, like the way that I see it too, is if you get a move of over $1 on a stock under five bucks, if you're not taking profits, I don't know what you're doing. Like unless you really have a, a long thesis on it, right? But that's that's awesome. So this is back to a good spot on SONN. I would like to dive in. I can put on the list too. I would like to dive in through a little bit more of, of what's going on behind the scenes, what's been going on since I last checked some of these earnings reports, things like that. But... That's uh, let me see if I can put it on to where it even is my list. Oh, here it is. Um, back on the list. It used to be like months ago, but she's finally back. Um, Ped. So it looks like the Oilers are are the ones that are, that are my my oil plays are green. H U S A and Ped. Interesting. Um, A T N X very dangerous. Let's take a peek. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the thing. These are not bad. These are good. Like, this is a good thing, I think, for 18x, but not right now. Give it some time. Let it bottom out. Once this thing kind of settles and if it finds support here around this four or five bucks, great. But if it doesn't, if it finds support down towards like 450 or even let's say it goes down to like three bucks, well, then that's a better spot. That's why you like to, I, I give it some time. It's been three days, so give it a little bit more. Let's see if it bottoms out and shows solid support before we assess, you know, if we want to do something, if, if you want to take a trade on it. FRX, the only reason why I haven't gone in like super, super heavy on this in my other accounts too, is that because it's because of this, I mean, because of this dip, um, that it's continuing to kind of fall with the overall market. So this is one though that I do like, I do like FRX a lot longer term, the merger with Beachbody. Um, the way some people are thinking about it too, is that think about it as like, and they're merging with there's like there's like a three it's like a three company merger so it's not just Beachbody there's like a MYX Fitness or something like that they're essentially it's essentially like a Peloton competitor but like not as expensive or like a cheaper alternative to a degree so think of it as like people some people are saying it as like Peloton for the masses right where you can and go after um, the you know the masses and not just the wealthy right because I guess Peloton I, I don't know how I don't know how much it costs and I know um, I don't personally I mean no one in my family has one, so I don't know, but like I know people and friends stuff who, who have, who love it, who love Peloton, but okay, that's why people like FRX because Beachbody has got a massive subscriber base as it is. And they're kind of for the masses. It's just not just kind of a, a one kind of track in a sense. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay. AIKI, this is getting interesting. This is one of those stocks for me. That's been just a pain in the A because I'm I'm getting ready to cut it because I don't like how it's holding up anymore. But I'm gonna give it. I was giving it a little more of a longer leash. Um, oh, for a bit now, I'm gonna get 15% uh, scalp. That's solid. That's a solid. That's a solid day. Uh, that is a solid day. No complaints. Clove. What did Clove? Clove had earnings, right? Um, what do we got? Clove had earnings, and then it just decided to die. So <laughs> Clove is a stock that I, what I've been, what I, I'm doing now is just se selling calls on it. Um, I don't think Clove is a, is going to be worth under $10 forever, but it's a stock that it's in the long-term account. Kind of like UWMC. I think it's going to take something to ignite it. But here's the thing that my thesis on Clove is that Chamath, right? The king of SPACs, as everyone says, I think after this, no one's going to say that anymore. Um, or he's kind of lost a little bit of that kind of credibility to it. To, no, not, nothing against the guy. But I'm saying he stood up for the retail traders. He kind of yapped a little too much. He talked a lot. And, uh, you know, they're giving him a little uh, a little hard time here. So, you know, we'll see. But Clove's also one of those stocks, too, that, it, you know, if you ask him or you ask somebody else, you know, if you ask him, 
he's not saying this is gonna this is gonna be the next best thing today. It's gonna you know, give it time. So yeah, markets are actually kind of gross today. Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Spy is coming back down, so we're kind of back down. You know, seems like dipping. Um, Nasdaq is getting a little hurt here. Nasdaq is getting back towards some of the lows that it was at last week, which is interesting to watch. So do we get a, a fake out come Monday? Do we get a bull trap in a sense? Maybe. Um, downtrending for right now. So here's our downtrend on, spot, on, on the S&P on SPY. Until, that's why I said until we get above this like 93.93, until we get above that, you know, I'm kind of, you know, not super bullish because we're up again because we're up at the highs like you know un until we get if we got a pullback like we did in september or even october then yeah i feel feel a lot better about the recovery kind of you know time frame and it's you know we'll see though we'll see i mean a lot of times this the market's recovered quite well um into the close so we'll have to see how that goes um I'm trying to see it's kind of hurting a lot of stocks too because things are just getting kind of you know, I think there's kind of getting ugly and kind of oversold and nasty and it's hurting kind of the sentiment to a degree. Uh, CTRM, um, CTRM has got to get back over, I believe, 110. Is that what it is? Yeah, 110. I want to see it get back over 110. I don't really want to see it dropping much below 90 cents, to be honest. If so, I would say it's probably you got a better shot down towards like the 60s. Even, you know, in the low 70s, maybe, if it holds 75 cents. OBID, Ripster, and Atlas, trying to short it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the news... I forget what the news was here, but I, I didn't think it was, like, anything crazy. So, not surprised, especially with the market coming down. It's not a terrible short idea. Yeah, OVID under this 4, like, 15 is going to go down. So watch that. Watch that 415. If it that cracks, it's, it's going down. Um, this is where we. This could be a decent time to look at some scalp opportunities, though, because this, these are the days that, like, you know, um, the scalps kind of make some sense when you can find some stuff that's down a lot when the market's coming down, and then if the market recovers a little bit, they bounce pretty hard. So. HJLI, yeah, I don't mind if it goes below seven. Um, what do we got? We got this. This is the chart that I have. So it's it's pretty. To me, under six seventy five, gets me somewhat not nervous, but then I'm like, okay, you know, if it can't hold that, let's see if it holds the six twenty five. So I have a longer leash on it. I really don't want to see it. The way that I see it is this: it's it can't close below six twenty. If it closes below six twenty, then I'm out, most likely. So. We'll see. But if you wanted some um, PLTR, if you wanted some good long, these are the days to buy the long-term plays. I wonder how Neo is. Neo is probably getting hit, right? Down, is it in the 30s yet? No. Okay. Neo is one that I still 100% believe in long-term. Now, Neo is one of the stocks that you know don't come to me in, in, a, in a month and say, Neo is down. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not worried about Neo now. I'm not worried about NEO March, April. I'm, I'll be worried about NEO if in a year it's still under 50 bucks. Then I'll be like, okay, what's going on? Um, and obviously, you know, we'll have to dive into what's going on behind the scenes. Do we have any fundamental changes, right? Are they, you know, slacking on deliveries and whatnot? So the issue with the February deliveries too was because of the Chinese um, holiday, right? There was the, the Lunar New Year. So I joke about I joke about that. People ask like, you know, <laughs> It's kind of a joke, but like, you know, it's a legit, it's, that's why the, the deliveries are down. So you're seeing, you know, deliveries down on, on Neo in February, but you're also seeing a lot of other companies, same type of thing. You see a hit to business because <laughs> everyone's on holiday, right? Um, okay. Let's see if we can, I would, sn I'm, I might just, you know, let's see if we can have some fun on this bad boy right here. Um, now, I'm not going to get the fill because, of course, it's pushing up as I speak. But AIKI is not a bad scalp potential idea. Um, what else do we have? Yes, hit that like button. 
Smash the like button. Destroy it. I'm not gonna lie, probably the best. The thing about the, the about um, when it comes to like the stock YouTube space too, and I had some guy quite in the comments of my video yesterday too. The video yesterday, he was saying like essentially like you're just here for the for the ad revenue. You don't actually care. The thing, if I was here for the ad revenue, then I would 100% optimize my channel for the ad revenue and for the algorithm, which I don't. Unfortunately, I don't do to a degree. Is is unfortunate in terms of I guess my benefit of ad revenue of making more money because if you look at some of the channels, right? that just do top stocks now. So AIKI, I was, I was thinking about snagging a 114 to see if I can get like a two cent scalp up to like 116 or 117 on a recovery. Maybe I get it if it dips, but you know, just that's kind of a side note, you know, and that's just nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm also scalping fairly, you know, small amounts um, until I have more of a system in place and, and do this a little more and then also have no settled cash restrictions and whatnot. So. That's at least for the next like week and a half. And then after two weeks from now, two weeks from now, I'm not trading at all. I'm going to be taking a break, um, going to Utah. And then after that, back full force. But the whole thing with the stock YouTube space is that, right, if you if you make videos on top stocks to buy now, and if you make that type of video every single day, every, if, that's, if that's your video, right, you're optimizing for that. And also top stocks to buy now if you put that in the title, does significantly better. So I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't want that anymore. Does significantly better than if you were to put, um, you know, stocks to watch, like top stocks to watch. No one cares about stocks to watch because they want the stocks to buy. And so if I was to optimize for the ad revenue, you look at some of those channels, how how they blew up so fast because they're kind of scammy in a sense of like, but they're scammy, but they work with the algorithm, right? So if you're someone who's more seasoned, you can see that as kind of BS scam, not that scam, but like, what is this person even doing? Like, what is that? What are they like, you know, it's kind of BS. Like they're just, they're giving you price targets from analysts. We all know if you've been in the game long enough, that doesn't mean Jack, right? <laughs> that actually, you know, sometimes it could be bad. Um, you know, where's the, any, any, is there any fundamental research sometimes behind some of these stocks? No, half the time. Um, is it flawed? Yes, a lot of the time. And is there any technical plan that they're also kind of giving? It's like, okay, like many times, no. And so like the, the, the algorithm just likes those types of videos and the titles. And so the algorithm promotes it. And so they grow their channel so, so fast. So they make a ton of money. They get a hundred thousand views on every single video or more. And it's like, okay, you know, cool. But realistically, is that person or that channel going to help people when times change, when someone's going through a struggle, you know, when they're struggling to build a strategy, when they're struggling to be self-sufficient, right? That's the whole goal of this channel is to make people self-sufficient. If you're not self-sufficient, then what's the point? Because then you can't go out and do this yourself and you always have to come and get somebody's alert, right? It's like, you know, so um, if I optimize the channel for the most to make the most money, then yes, um, I would just be making top stocks to buy videos all the time and it wouldn't help anyone. <laughs> so I don't do that. Um, what else? Uh, I have, I am, if AI, I'm going to give AI KI some time, but I've been kind of like scalping it inside of the swing. Now I tried to get a 114, but I kind of missed that. Now it's at 117, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, You think we'll see a recovery at 11? Eh, it's bad. Things are bad. Dow's, the Dow's back green, so we'll see. PLTR is down a percent and a half. I think it's still in the, and still just fine. Um, 450 on OBID. What's four? What's it at? Yeah, if it gets back over 450, that's pretty key. It's it's just below VWAP. So if it can reclaim it, that'll be a decent idea. Yeah, and I and I hope people appreciate that. And, and most the thing is, most people, you you don't realize that. But ultimately, right? Hopefully, after someone comes in, if someone's brand new, and if they do care to stick around for more than just like a video here or there, right? They start to see that, and they're like, oh, there's actually this is actually valuable. So that's the whole point, right? Um, my ELYS is down three percent. It's still fine. FRX, I'm gonna go buy more later today for sure in my long-term account. Um, yeah, UWMC back at like 10 bucks support area. Crazy how that one's the, it's up on the top, you know, it's like a top five gainer on the day, UWMC. Um, 
Is it really? No, that's I'm looking at pre market. Oh man, wow. I'm gonna, I gotta go to the the one day. Dang. I missed that. What's a rocket doing? Rocket, yeah, rocket fell below 35. That's not looking good. Now it's gonna have resistance up at 35-ish. So let's be care be careful if you're you know looking at that one. Um Push on bond yields. Okay, let's take a peek. I have this pulled up the ten year. Let's. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, that is interesting. So yeah, look at the ten year. The ten year is pushing up now. Over one hundred and fifty is key. Back over one hundred and fifty, and things could get interesting for the markets in terms of the, to the downside. So that's interesting. Crude oil's up. What is crude at? How has crude been doing? Grinding, doing its thing. I like it. Still overall putting in higher lows, putting in an uptrend. So um, I like that. So that's why my oil plays are up. But uh, yes, the 10 years up. So it's getting close to that 150 again. INPX, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, that was like a like a last year stock, kind of in a sense to me. But I mean, we can look at it. Um, it's probably not going to move too much, I would think, right? Okay, no, it had a pretty big move lately. This is not a bad spot if you want IMPX. This is not a bad spot for it. Um, I would give it down to one dollar. So you're going to risk thirty cents to the downside for a potential move to like two bucks if it gets a, a spike. So that's what I would probably do. Yes, the VWAP video. The VWAP video will be coming soon. Um, I have that idea. I have a bunch of other video ideas too. What I, I, I want to do a candlestick video because I always get questions on the candlesticks in terms of like, I currently have hollow candles I use. People use Heiken Ashi. People use all sorts of candles. So I was going to do like a full candlestick video because it's important to know. If you don't know how the, what the candles mean and you're using hollow candles and you're just thinking that every green candle means the same thing, it's actually, that's not true. And so that paints a different picture when I'm looking at a chart. So it gives you a different thought process on the stock. So that's important. I think very important to know as well. Um, here's a look at comps. Look at comps. I like. I'm gonna buy more comps actually right now <laughs> while we speak. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just buying comps like 200 shares of time. Again, this is just for my size of the account. My you know how I do it. But um, I like comps down around three bucks. I don't. If it goes below three. Yeah, maybe I, I get rid of it, but we'll see how it goes. Um, it's sitting super low though, and it's kind of in this downtrend. So I pretty much break of this downtrend. I think this thing makes a shot back up to five. And they had decent news recently too. Drone and 5G play. Um, AIKI, I have AIKI. I don't like it if it goes below $1. So it's still looking okay if it if it continues if it if it doesn't go lower than like one thirteen today, what are we still seeing? We're still seeing higher lows on the daily chart. So we're still seeing it putting in higher lows. We just want to see the momentum pick up to the upside. And the market being red the past two days hasn't helped. Obviously Monday the stock popped up to like one thirty five and we were feeling pretty good, but now it's pulled back. Market being down doesn't help. So you know that's kind of the the, the idea. Yeah, the other thing with comms too is that I don't want to say three bucks is going to have to hold. It could go below, right? It could certainly go below, but I do like the idea behind it. Um, so it's it's also probably a longer term play, you know. But it's a stock that's down five percent today. Market's down half a percent. Spy, Dow's up. Nasdaq's down one and a half. Nasdaq has been taking hits lately again because tech's been getting you know taken to the woodsheds. Seems like. Um. Let's see. Um, do you use TUS? No, I do not. One other thing too is I there I've been seeing people using um, when the overlay volume, like volume nodes, to the right of the chart, in a sense. Like if so, like if I'm thinking, I, I don't know, I haven't looked and done any looking into Weeble, but if you can overlay volume on the right hand side instead of on the bottom. Many times you could see price points that have had higher volume, which also helps you determine support areas. So that's that's one thing I'm going to be watching too. Like I want to be, get, I would like to get into that more because that could be kind of fun. Seems to be helpful. Um, four fifty break on OVID. There it goes. 
Look at that, popping to 475 just like that. You know, you break view out, you're pushing back the upside, and you got the nice little pop. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Another thing to watch, another thing too, is that the market has clearly, the past couple of weeks, so the past two weeks, clearly been significantly slower than it has been in the past few months. Um, really, it's just, I don't know, it's just been, ever since like last week, it's kind of scared people off. Things haven't really come back. I thought Monday, maybe, oh wow, things are back in green. But also Monday was like up so much that it set up for the, you know, today and yesterday to be red. So it kind of set us up for that. So it didn't really, you know, things didn't really pick back up. So how's Cone doing? This one, see how it looks like it wants to potentially make a shot back up and might get halted again and make a shot back up for the highs. Kind of rounding itself up, bottomed out, double bottom down around 36. 36 would have been a pretty good spot. And now it's recovering beautifully. So that's good. Portfolio is slightly less red. Um, yeah, I mean, my I was down. What was I? I was I was down nasty last week, but that's because of swings. So we're, I mean, I'm currently green this week. But if we keep up on this pace, I'm not going to be. If things keep just kind of draining out my account. <laughs> um, NCLH. Um, Norwegian cruise 29. I, I think honestly the cruise plays, well, you're seeing right now, what are we seeing? So you're seeing with the NASDAQ being down the past, you know, for a lot, like a lot the past couple of weeks, right? Um, it's been, on the, on the red days, it's down, you know, and much, much more than spy down the S and P, but what we're probably, what we're seeing is we're seeing a shift out of tech and into kind of recovery ideas. So this is a recovery idea. I actually think if you want it, like I wouldn't sell this anytime soon as if I was, you know, personally doing it. Unless, you're, unless your intention is a short-term trade. I would not be selling Norwegian Cruise. I wouldn't be selling any travel companies right now um, at all. I mean, if anything, I would be, I'll be buying them. Um, yeah, I did, I did a KM, I scalped KMPH, you know, barely, but I, I scalped it. This is not, a, probably not bad a bad spot for it again, but things are starting to slow down. I scalped KMPH from, for like a dollar from like 16 to 17. Um, but that was really it for the scalps. And I mean, I'm mostly a swing trader, so I don't really do too much scalps. So that was the only scalp that I did, um, at least today. And I tried for other ones. Um, AIKI was one I was watching down at like 114, but I missed it and it popped to 118. So that was or 119. Wow, that's nice. That would have been a nice scalp. That would have been beautiful um, on AIKI. So that's like sometimes it's just picking your, it's picking your battles. Now again, AIKI, it's like a quick scalp. I'm not going to try this again because it could come back down, down, trying to make a new low. And then that would be a better spot for a scalp idea. Um, a lot of times the scalp idea too, is if you're watching VWAP. So this white line is VWAP, the volume weighted average price. When you see a stock dropping fairly low volume significantly below VWAP, Many times, where would I take profits on a scalp? I'm taking profits just before VWAP because that's going to be an area of resistance. And so where are we seeing resistance for AIKI? Yeah, resistance was found at VWAP. So if I'm buying this thing at like 117, that's a, a much less kind of interesting trade for me because it's like right at VWAP or it's getting it's like one cent away from VWAP. I don't want to trade that. If, if I can say like AIKI, right, at 114, now I had, you know, VWAP was at 118. I, that's four cents. That's almost four percent. That's not a bad idea. It's not a bad scalp, right? So you know, the way I see the scalps, looking for probably like minimum one percent, looking for like one plus percent on a scalp. If it's if it's less than one percent, it's not really worth it, you know, unless you're taking your hundred thousand dollar account and you're going all in on the scalp. At that, you know, maybe maybe I mean maybe that's where it's worth it. But it's not. That's not. I'm not going to risk that much on a scalp like that. Um, so calm because I mean, because I'm, I'm mostly a swing trader, right? So I'm, I'm not like, oh my gosh, like we got to go here. Like, oh, I'm going to buy this right now. Like I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty calm. And also, you know, as, as I guess with experience right on red days, markets crashing, like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't, you know, you, you, you see it happen enough. It's like, okay, whatever. If the S and P was down like 3%, maybe we'd be a little bit on edge here, but it's not. <laughs> 
<laughs> lack of rocket emojis. Yeah, that's the other thing too. That stuff gets the views. I don't. I find it. You know, it's 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 like uh, like explosions, rocket emojis. You know. Um, view op settings. I can pull it up. Um, can I? Let's see. Um, indicators. I uh, go to edit indicators. View op. We have our view op. We got what do we got? We got a view op fourteen. I want to dive into this too. Um, there's multiple types of view op that you can use, I believe. Which I believe, if I could f pull up, um, I don't know where that. I was looking at this the other day too. There was more options, I thought. Mm -mm -mm. But view op fourteen is whatever they have set is the is the setting that I'm currently on, I guess. So. I don't know why that's I thought I could sh I thought I could edit that or I thought I could um I thought I could I thought there was more options there where there was different settings maybe maybe not um yeah that's weird I don't know but it's view up 14 is whatever is the settings at least I, I didn't I didn't change anything from what from what they have set up on um on Weeble at least Let's see. So oils, but let's. I want to look at US. I haven't looked at USO actually lately too. USO popping a little bit up two percent. Oh, I didn't realize up two percent. So USO reversing. It was down in the past couple of days, but reversing. So that's why the oil plays are up. Um, we just need a, a blowout oil play or a blowout oil day or something, and then I'll be good. <laughs> um, what else is going down? I don't even know. It's it's honestly kind of a boring day, and and this is good to a degree, right? I I, I like when they're when a boring day, you know. Because you can set up and say, okay, a slightly red day, stocks lower volume, selling off, find what you like, scoop them up, and look to swing them. Um, sometimes red days the best days. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I found too that the red days are the best days to scalp stuff. That's just what I've noticed. Nept, ah, uh, Nept, come on, man. Now, when you can, cannabis plays move up, Nept will go up. ELYS, I'm still, I'm going to wait for my 10, roughly. You know, if, if we get a spike and this thing goes to like nine, I'll probably take profits there. But ELYS, I have an average at like six. I had more under six. I sold some on the spike and then I bought some again or I just left what I the left the remainder, I believe, or whatever. And I'm going to ride it to 10. Um, you can't see the multiple entries either for the view up. That's weird. Yeah, I wonder if that's just some weird like thing that's happening right now. So, um, overall this month, well, the this month has been three days. So, <laughs> green on the month because this week I'm in green. Last month was great. We can I, mean, I can pull it up. Well, we got past month we're up like 19%, which is, I'm not going to complain. Three months, 89%. I'm not going to complain with that, with those numbers. Um, but this week, up like 600 bucks as of right now. So I don't like to look at that too much, to be honest, because you get yourself kind of thinking about the wrong things when you make a trade. But, you know, slow times. Um, it's not the end of the world. Still, the goal is still to have... Um, Skull is still to hit 100k by September. That would be one year from going from 15 to 15,000 to 100,000. Now, okay, the only thing that was added was free stock. So if I get a free stock from someone who signs up to Weeble, which shameless plug always, right? The platform that I use is Weeble. There's always a link down below in all my videos if you want to check it out. Um, Vive is coming back down to a favorable spot, down towards three bucks. Not bad. That could be a decent idea. Um, yeah, 320-ish would be this low right here. Yeah, I mean, it could come down to three, like maybe, and then bounce. 
Um, so we'll see. Um, CTIB. Yeah, it's, it's, it just had a spike to five, but now it's back down to a much more favorable entry point. So I would risk it down to two bucks. Wouldn't want to see it dropping below two bucks. So risking 42 cents to the downside here. It's kind of kind of a, a higher risk. So maybe if it comes down a little more, I would be interested. But um, yeah, but it has been slow. But that's, at the end of the day too, right? I understand that I had good past months. I'm not going to, I'm also in a mode of capital preservation. So I'm not going to go and lose. Like, yeah, like last week we took a pretty fat, you know, slap on the wrist. But again, that was expected when the market turned, right? That was somewhat expected. And now you settle, you make sure you don't go and lose it all again. And if, as long as you, you can keep that capital that you made, right? You've made all that money past few months. As long as you keep that, you know, that's the name of the game. Um, Cause there's always in their day, there's always in their trade. If all of a sudden you're, you know, you're eyeing up rocket yesterday and you buy rocket and you make a hundred percent, right? There's any day something could happen or you can make a small decision any day that changes the course of your account, you know, literally, um, you know, for the week, for the day, for whatever kind of goal, let's say every, every month you have a goal or every week you have a goal. Like for my goal is 5% per week, but at the same time, I understand 5% per week is cool. But when you're swing trading, there's no guarantees that that happens. If, if we're in a super slow market, probably doesn't happen. You probably don't get that 5% per week, you know? So it depends. And that's why if you're a day trader, then it's a little bit easier to have those goals and, and kind of hit them or not hit them. And, and like, okay, either I hit it or I didn't, you know? Swing trading, you're kind of at the mercy of the market to a degree. Now, obviously you're trying to pick your higher reward, lower risk setups so that when we do have solid days, when you know things are good, those stocks push 20, 30% sometimes, you know, to the upside. So um, that's that. And I'm probably going to wrap, we went up for about an hour and a half. So I'll probably wrap things up here and maybe we'll do this as a, as a new thing, like Wednesday mornings. That, that might be the new kind of plan. Wednesday morning live. So we'll see if we'll stick to that next week. Um, but it was fun. I mean, we, we for those who were at, here at the beginning, the only like scalp that I took was KMPH. And this was like a dollar scalp from 15, um, from 16 to 17, which was fun. And then uh, ever since then, things got quiet. So the big runners of the day are not really moving too, too much. And we'll see if they push up into the, uh, into the after hour. So that'll be the next key to watch um, for some of the runners. But that said, you know, a red day is an opportunity to see if you want to scalp out so many, uh, any deals across swings, adding to positions, looking for new swings, things like that. So, um, strategies, uh, mostly swing trading. So I have tons of videos on the channel going over swing trading. I have a whole playlist going over swing trading. I go over a lot of strategy there, a lot of different, um, there's recently a strategy too. I think it was a video 10 X is swing, the swing trading strategy, 10 X my account. And it, it literally did. I mean, that's the strategy that I use a lot. Um, rocket had a lot, rocket had a lot of reasons, or a lot of things, uh, going for it yesterday. It had high short float. Jim Kramer started talking about it. Reddit. It had a lot of things. Um, a lot of catalysts kind of, we're not catalysts, but a lot of things kind of came together and it, it just, it just ran. Um, okay. So awesome. Wednesday mornings. We'll, we'll, we'll plan on that. Uh, let's see. Do we have any free stocks to open? We do not. All right. So that sounds good. Hopefully everyone enjoy. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button on the way out. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Red day, I guess for spy, a lot of stocks red, but you know, good opportunity to scoop up some dips on things you do like for, you know, swings and stuff like that. So Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.